Hey guys, Hunter Tom here, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to look at an air gun that was released in 2006. That air gun is the... Ooh, I'm sorry guys, that was the Phantom of the Opera theme song. Uh, it's definitely a good plan, I recommend it and stuff. But yeah, I wanted to talk about the Crossman Phantom, which is a great gun, and it's been released for more than 10 years now, and uh, we're about to see if it's still worth it 10 years later. The Crossman Phantom is available in many different varieties and price ranges. It varies from 495 feet per second in spring piston in .177 to 850 feet per second in nitro piston in .22. You can get this gun in .77 or .22 in spring piston or nitro piston, and some guns come with 4x32 center point scopes. There are many different models. The one I have here has an FPS cap of 495 feet per second and one of mine scopes on it. I've shot this gun at a higher FPS and it's really hard to feel the difference until you see what you've shot downrange. This gun is very budget friendly depending on which model you go for. You can get this gun in between anywhere from $100 or $180 and you can get a consistent reliable accuracy at 25 yards if you have a good scope on it. It doesn't feel super high quality like a Benjamin Trail but it does feel good for its price range. It's a sweet spot for a first time air gunner or someone that's on a tight budget. It'll get you shooting and that's the good quality about this gun. The Phantom has a total barrel length of 15 to 18 inches depending on which model you go with. It isn't the longest barrel but it'll get the job done. I, I myself prefer longer barrels but sometimes you have to lose a little barrel length to gain better gun design and functionality. Talking about functionality, the Crossman Phantom has a cocking effort 26 to 30 pounds again depending which model you go with. Here's a few test shots at 15 yards. This is 15 yards with 15 pellets with the uh, Benjamin Hall point. It's not too bad at uh, 15 yards. It's 15 shots and it's not the biggest, best grouping, but I have a really bad scope on it and I'm not holding it that well. So accurate at 15 yards. Alright, so now that you know how this gun shoots, I'll give you a very comprehensive and in-depth review of this gun. So, the Phantom is an approximate total length of 44 inches. It's made of a black synthetic material and it doesn't feel too bad in the hands. It's not the nicest gun to hold in the hands, but it isn't bad either. It, all feels, it also feels a little bulky and rough to hold. You only really re realize this if you go from a high quality gun to the Phantom. Like, I only re re realize the quality of this gun once I go from a Benjamin to the Phantom. It can feel a little rough to hold sometimes, but really it's not that bad. It has a decent cheek rest and nice grooves for your fingers and hands. It's a, it's a little heavy, but you can get used to it after hunting with it for an hour. It weighs 6 pounds, and it, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is sort of. The base model does not come with the scope, but some of the Nitro Pistons and um, 1000X models do. It has a scope stop hole on the back and red fiber optic uh, back sights and a green fiber optic uh, front sight. It's also pretty easy to get into. Uh, there's only three screws that you have to remove to get into this gun. You can modify everything from the power plant to the stock, and I might do this in a future video. The pros of this gun is that it's cheap, it's accurate at 25 yards, uh, it, has a it has a scope stop hole on the back, it's easy to mod and assemble, and it has a simple design and it's easy to cock. Now for the cons of this gun. In my eyes, the Crossman Phantom is not accurate in at 25 yards. 
It's pretty loud, it's heavy, it has a bad trigger, and the safety can be confusing sometimes. Also, this might be a con to some, there's no protective shield for the front fiber optic sight, which can be bad if you plan on taking your gun out in the woods, and yeah, apart from that, the Phantom's pretty good, but here's a little quick long range test at 100 feet or about 33 yards. Okay guys, so as you can see, I was using a really bad scope from an old 22 and I got one up here and a couple, it's a kind of a strange grouping but I was shooting quick and I think it's pretty good. I hit the paper and that's, that's good, surprising it's a break action with a bad scope and it's coming from me. So I'm not that good with break barrels, I mean it's hard to shoot them, you have to hold them in the artillery hold and that's not bad, I mean we got one, two, we got one in the bullseye which is not bad, I was like 10 shots or something. And everything landed on the paper, so that's that to me is good. I was using a bad scope, and if, I'm sure if I was using a good scope, and I was lying like proning or something, I'd probably get a much better grouping. But that to you proves that even if you have a bad scope, this gun will be accurate. And if you have a good scope, then it's going to be even better. But uh, I only missed one off the paper, so that's really good. Now I'm going to do a test with a non-shooter, and we'll see how well he does with the gun in this condition. So yeah, let's go and try it out. I'm now going to give you an all-around critical quality review. So the Crossman Phantom's overall quality is, should be what you expect from a $85 to $100 break action pellet gun. The stock quality is not that great and it's kind of rough on some edges. Like I've said before, the quality of the trigger isn't that great either. The gun I have here was in rough shape when I first got it. In fact, you might have spotted some of the rust marks in the B-roll shots. This gun has been sitting in the corner of a shed for a few months, so it was covered in sawdust and cobwebs. The seals had no more lubricant and most of the gun didn't shoot too well. What do I mean by not shoot too well? I mean like it couldn't even hit the 200 feet per second mark. Yeah, it was bad. I cleaned it up well and now it shoots as well as my first Crossman Phantom. It's good to know that if your gun is in bad condition, you can fix it. I just wanted to add that in. This gun isn't 100% indestructible though. I have a friend that has the exact same gun as mine, and it's spring piston, and there is a loose metal part in the spring assembly, and this has been, I've seen this on many uh, Crossman Phantoms. My friend has seen this on other Crossman Phantoms, and it's a problem that may occur with them, but it's not that big of a deal. It still will work fine, but it's always good to know that these things can break if you are not safe with them. The metal is, is pretty high quality, but it doesn't make the nicest noise when it shoots a pellet. It makes a very metallic and clanky sound, and you can really hear the spring extend. But apart from that, it makes a regular break action sound. For the next part of the video, I'll give you a perspective from a hunter slash pest control guy's point of view. The Cross Phantom is by no means a Benjamin, Deanna, or Hatson when it comes down to hunting. I would recommend hunting with this gun no more than 30 yards with a good scope setup. It's capable of shooting far, but it's, not, it's just not accurate enough. If you're going to get this gun for hunting, I would recommend that you go for the .22 Nitro Piston version since it would probably be the most suited for hunting small pests. The largest game this could kill would be probably a small raccoon if you had the 950 feet per second and .22 gun, but even that's a little underpowered. It's a good squirrel gun because it's easy to maneuver around in tight spaces, in the woods, and it's thin. It's also good for hunting pigeons too. I've taken this gun probably to its limit. I've hunted in minus 20 below weather with this gun and I've climbed the side of silos, trailers, buildings, and trees. It hasn't broke yet, so it's pretty good for hunting in basically any reasonable climate. The Crossman Phantom has a very simple and reliable design, which means a lot less things can go wrong, and that's a good thing. It's a little heavy though. After six to eight hours of hunting, uh, I get tired of carrying this thing around. 
Apart from that, I would recommend getting this gun if you're on that tight $85 to $90 budget and you want to get started in air rifle hunting. It'll get the job done if you have a small pest around your house, but you should be able to hunt on farms and, if it, in, and in the bush too if you get in the 25 yard range and if it's not too windy. Although you should get the strongest variant of the Phantom or you should modify it to be stronger if you want to use it for small pest hunting. Definitely make sure you can get a grouping that's, a maximum, that's at the maximum the size of a penny at 25 yards before you bring it out in the field. Cleaning the Phantom is a breeze, but if you do use this gun outside for long periods of time, the Phantom logo will rust. Trust me, I've seen it on three different guns. Alright, here's a 50 yard test. So 50 yards, that's not too bad. Not, not, not too bad at all. The mount takes 11 meter dovetail and there's a lot of mounting space on the rail since they are very long. So this is good for mounting long scopes. The trigger is really bad. It's not good for planking and it's not that good for hunting. The trigger pull is approximately 3.75 pounds. It has a two stage lever safety located beside the trigger. But really it's good for a first time air gunner though. This gun is decent for hunting small pests under 30 yards, but I would, I would only consider using it at 25 yards max. It's good for small pests such, such as rats, crows, squirrels, blackbirds, and pigeons. Now the fun part about this gun is that it's highly moddable. If you live in Canada and purchase this gun under 495 feet per second, you can really easily boost up its, its FPS to 800 feet per second with very minimal modding. You could really make a ghost gun. Get it? A ghost gun, because it's a crossman phantom. Ghost? No, sorry. That was, that was not a funny joke. I thought it'd be funny. No, but seriously, you can block the piston bleed hole on the front and you could add some pennies in the back of the piston to make it stronger, but I'm not responsible for what you do with this information. Talking about modding, let's take a look inside of this gun. The very first thing you want to do when opening your air rifle is to make sure it's unloaded. So, check the breech to make sure it's empty, it's empty, and to make sure you can pull the trigger to make sure it's empty. Now we can open the gun. So once that's done, there are two screws on the side of the stock and one on the bottom beside the, located beside the trigger and you can just unscrew those. Alright, so once you have the three screws out and you didn't rest your scope against the table, now with a bit of force you can lift the entire mechanism out of the stock like that. So right here we have the Phantom's entire air gun me mechanism. We have the barrel, it's connected on the side which you can take off and we have the arm right here that connects to the piston. We also have the famous Crossman trigger and we also have the uh, piston assembly right here and the scope that's mounted on top. And this trigger isn't that great but it's also very easily moddable and that's why uh, a lot of people take it apart and try to make their own and better trigger or they can buy a part for online and change their trigger out. As you saw there guys, the Crossman Phantom has a very simple design. Overall, this gun is good, reliable, and cheap. I wouldn't recommend getting this gun over $100 US or $125 Canadian. I would buy this gun second hand because it's not that like complicated and it wouldn't be too hard to fix. It's a great gun to shoot out of the box and it's good at 25 yards as long as you break it in at uh, with a good 200 pellets. 11 years later this gun has been beaten things such as protective guards and new nitro pistons but apart from that it's held up well. Definitely recommend it for new shooters or you know older ones that just want a gun to mess around with around the house for small pests and it might not be the best hunting gun out there but it will get you shooting and that's one of the most important quality of this gun. I mean, it's very reliable and it's kind of something like say, it's like the SKS kind of, of uh, hunting rifles. So it's not the most accurate and it's not uh, the most fanciest or the best, but it will get you shooting and that's something quite important about it. I wouldn't recommend this gun as a Red Rider replacement, but it's definitely one step up from the uh, Ruger Explorer since it's got the longer barrel and it's a bit stronger depending which model you go with. 11 years later, this gun is still really good. Uh, it's held up very well with the competition and it's actually one of the first guns that I started shooting. It's either the Crossman Phantom or the Crossman Raven. I'd have to look at some old clips of when I was younger, but I'm pretty sure this is the first gun I started shooting 
when I started air gunning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I helped you make a decision whether or not you should buy this gun. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm Hunter Tom and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye bye. Fun fact, the caulking aid on the Benjamin Trail Nitro Piston Pistol fits on the end of the barrel of the Crossman Phantom, which makes it look like a suppressor.